Hi, I'm Ilya. I'm Justin. I'm Paul. I'm Sarah. And we're going to be building a, a railgun! Here we have two conducting metal rails fastened to a level surface. We also have a metal bar connected to two obviously directed neodymium magnets. When we put the rail onto the bars, watch what happens when we apply a large current. Ready? The battery provides a current that flows from the positive terminal through the rail into the magnetic field. And uh, any current or moving charge creates a magnetic field around the rail. And this is a region where there's magnetic force. And magnetic force has both a magnitude and a direction. A vector has a magnitude and a direction. The length of a vector is used to show the magnitude, and the arrow shows the direction the vector is going. In this case, we have a vector A with magnitude A going straight up or north. In the case of a current carrying wire, and a current carrying wire produces a magnetic field. So uh, in this case, to find the magnetic field, what you do is point your thumb in the direction of the current. For example, here the current is shown to be going to the right, so my thumb will be pointing directly to the right. And you pull your fingers into a fist so you curl your fingers and the way your fingers curl show the way that the magnetic field is generated around the coil so for example here the wire is going in this direction the current rather and the, co the coils here show the magnetic field produced around the coil and they're going counterclockwise so for example if the current was going through the pencil from the eraser to the to the lead, I put my thumb along the pencil and curl my fingers in a fist around the pencil, and that would be what the magnetic field looks like around the pencil. So, as Sarah and Paul explained, a current, or just a moving charge, uh, produces a magnetic field. But how does a magnetic field produce a force, you may ask? Well, luckily, there's an equation for that. So, uh, this is a modified version of the equation for the Lorentz force. And here we have the force expressed as the cross product of two vectors. Uh, the current times the length of the rod crossed with the magnetic field. So once you understand vectors, you can use the magnetic field vector and the velocity vector of a charged particle to find the direction of the magnetic force vector. So for example, in this case, the velocity vector is shown to be going up the page. So I put my fingers in this direction, up the page, and I bend my fingers so that they go into the direction of the magnetic field vector V. And so like this. And then the direction your thumb is pointing at the end indicates the direction the magnetic force vector is going. So in this case, my thumb is going down. So the magnetic force is downward. And I showed that by putting an X here which denotes a vector going into the page, and I marked it as my magnetic force vector. So now we're going to talk about how all these concepts apply to our railgun. At the center of our circuit, the magnetic field points in a single direction. In our case, the current is flowing in a counterclockwise direction. Using the right-hand rule, we can see that the magnetic field at the center of the circuit is pointing out of the board while the magnetic field outside of the circuit is pointing into the board. If we were to switch the current, the magnetic field at the center of the circuit would then be pointing into the board, while the magnetic field outside of the circuit will be pointing out of the board. It's also important to understand that the configuration of the two neodymium magnets at each end of the rod produces a strong magnetic field in the upwards direction. We're going to talk about um, the current, right? So we already discuss that uh, magnetic fields either are going to be into the board or out of the board, so now we're going to talk about current, right? So current, um, conventional current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, but we know that we're going to be dealing with electron flow. Uh, so it flows from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So in this case, it's going to be going in, a, in the counterclockwise direction, which means that across the projectile, which again, is the, is the object in question, because this is the object that is going to be experiencing the force, across the projectile, it's going to go from left to right. 
Uh, so as Ilya just explained, the current flows in this direction, and the magnetic field flows out this direction. And by the right-hand rule, the force will then point in this direction, and that pushes the projectile that way. Today, we learned about the physics behind firing a projectile using a combination of electricity and magnetism. Essentially, a current, as well as the magnetic field induced by the current, combine to produce a force on the projectile. Uh, with that said, we hope you enjoyed our simple demonstration of a truly spectacular physical phenomenon.